Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a special edition of Orbital Takes. Today is, oh shit, is it going to be August by the time we post this? It, it's probably August, yeah. Okay. Probably. Anyway, we got Pat in New York City over here, second time in Manhattan. What up, my What's brother? Up, man? So, uh, guys, uh, Pat has had this trip planned for forever now. We wanted to record at Space with Spo HQ. We got him here in the flesh. Let's go. First off, how you like in Manhattan so far? Like you said, it's my only, only my second time to Manhattan. Uh, I wish I could come here all the time. Yeah. Uh, Manhattan's awesome, dude. Well, I, I can't believe you live here. Guys, we just uh, finished up brunch at uh, Factory 380. Great time there. Shout out, Factory. So we're going to start this episode off a little bit different, okay? So Pat lives in Kansas. He's never had a happy dad before. I figured that today would be the perfect opportunity for you to try one of these new seltzers to give us an official happy dad review because you know you're a happy dad. Uh, I, I like to think I am. So, okay, like there's I a couple am. flavors. We got uh, Wild Cherry. And then we got, sorry, because I drank the rest of them, my bad. <laughs> but I got uh, pineapple. Which, which one would you prefer? Ooh, uh, not pineapple. Okay, yeah. my bad. I'll uh, take the pineapple. All right. I'll, I'll do cherry. So we're going to do an official taste test of Happy Dad here. Um, I love I love these new drinks. I think they're fucking great. Um, so I want your official review, but you got to drink like at least like four to five sips before you can like ha have your official moment. So ASMR. Uh, here we go. ASMR, uh, open it up. Happy Dad, cheers. Orbital takes in Manhattan. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Cheers, everyone. So give us your initial, and then take another one and give us a follow-up, and then a final score. My initial was it tastes like cough syrup. <laughs> but then, well, but the, then as it settled on the palate, it that goes away. Well, the the wild cherry is uh, like really strong. The wild yeah. cherry is the str I gave you like the strongest flavor because oh, I drank okay. the other one. Okay, okay. Yeah. So now, now's the follow-up. No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> That's good. By the way, I'm not sponsored by Happy Dad. I just drink it a lot. You know what I mean? Is this uh, is this vodka in here? Uh, I think it's like malt liquor, which okay. is kind of okay. like. Oh, is this a seltzer? Okay, so it's not like High Noon where it's no, a. Uh, no, it's, it's not like, like real vodka. No, gotcha. so you can't buy these in liquor stores, but they're all around the country. Yeah. Basically, it's like these guys on YouTube who post these funny prank videos, and now they had such a big following, they were like, "Hey, why don't we sell seltzers?" Like that's. Yeah. I I think that's so smart because that's like where branding's going, right? They're like, "Why would we drink Bud Light on camera if?" Right. Like, we could just make our own, you know what I mean? And uh, let me make something clear, everyone. Uh, just because I live in Kansas doesn't mean I live in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> uh, we do have happy dads around in, in Kansas City. Yeah, I just yeah, haven't yeah. had the pleasure of You just haven't had yet. the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I, all right, all right, I see what's going on over there. I mean, it's not Manhattan, but yeah. it's, you know, it's not like we're living in squalor either. Dude, so how long are you here for? Uh, here till Sunday. All right. No yeah, no, here no till no. Sunday. Yep, nice. till tomorrow. Uh, got in yesterday. Uh, walked around uh, Manhattan this morning. Um uh, yeah, man, it's just uh, it's so vibrant here. It's uh, it's every time I'm here, I'm just like try not to uh, fill the stereotype of a Midwestern coming to the big city for the yeah. first time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's New York City is just yeah. it, it's amazing. Well, how do you think I felt when I went to Kansas for school? Like people would like be talking to me. They're like, hey, like, what's up, Paulie D? What's up? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like the like, situation like I, I was probably I'm probably the least Guido. Like, I'm probably the least amount of Guido out of all my friends, but in Kansas, I was the biggest Guido of all time. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know. I have a, a friend who's might might be more of a Guido than you, but really? you're, you're right up there. You're right up there. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that. All right, so the first thing that we wanted to talk about today is the biggest news of the day. Uh, China has a falling rocket right now that is currently hurling towards the Earth. They did another launch out of the, what, what was the name of that rocket? The Long March B? Uh, the Long March 5B. So the Long March 5B, they launched another payload to their new space station, right. which is called the, like the Tang Wong or something? Uh, to Tang uh Tian yeah. Wong, Whatever oh man! Uh, I, I I used to know that the yeah. versus the Tian He, which is the yeah. the vehicle. I think uh, I might have those backwards. Apologies if I do. But all I know is that um, that place has no windows. The space station has no fucking windows. So Are like, you serious? Yeah. They, well, they have like a small one, but the predominant like they get their lighting and the outside views from like screens. Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. That is some. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. I know. I wouldn't want to live there. I just, feel like the one thing you need in space is a is a damn window so you can not go crazy. I think. The same thing think about the one that Insp so inspiration four had the biggest window in space in history yes biggest window ever flown and i think that that like seeing that now i don't think i can ever have anything less than that i think that they have to include that like that uh mm -hmm. the glass dome what's the official name the, the um uh, the cupola the cupola uh, yeah the cupola needs to be on every fucking spacecraft yeah. from also uh, uh the unofficial name the uh, mcdonald's play place <laughs> Wait, I never heard that. Did you just yeah. come up with that? No, no. Uh, the it, it, during the uh, that that Netflix documentary, uh -huh. they they were talking about the installation of it, and she's like, "Yeah, that's like it looks like one of the the 
uh, domes at the McDonald's play yeah, place. So you, look, yeah, so yeah. you look at it, you're like, I can't unsee that now. That is spot on. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, so China, they launched another payload to their space station. And with this rocket that they're using, it, they don't have a controlled re-entry for the rockets, right? So if you are working with SpaceX or you know any other, well, actually pretty much just SpaceX right now because they, they can land their own rockets, but... SpaceX, they'll launch a rocket, they'll control it back into uh, into the ocean or on into like um, the place where they land the rockets on. What's the name of that? Uh, uh, there's uh, there, there's the drone ships. Yeah. I'm, have, I'm like quizzing you today, but they, they, they have they have uh, the several several drone ships, but they yeah. also have landing zone one or exactly. whatever at, at so Kennedy Space Center. That is how you're supposed to do it. China, they just let their shit go uncontrolled back into the atmosphere and default onto any one of us yeah. at any fucking moment. It, well, you brought up a good point too. Um, it, most companies, if not all companies, have some kind of uh, retro rocket propulsion or some kind of ability to, um, yeah. you know, uh, deorbit it quickly. Yeah. Uh, or they launch it uh, in a trajectory where drag, atmospheric drag, will will grab it sooner rather than later. Mm-hmm. So uh, China has not yet learned this lesson, uh, or it says it has, yeah. but you know, you just look and and it's obviously not. So this is where it makes no sense to me. How are we doing this again? We just fucking did this yeah. last year, guys. Yeah. If you don't remember, this was one of my biggest videos to date. Yeah. 275,000 when I was making the video about a falling rocket. And because people are interested because in, they don't want a fucking rocket to fall on them. This is a small apartment building, basically, that is yeah. falling from the sky. Right now, I think it's going to crash tomorrow, you said, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be on the 31st. Yeah, so it's going to be on the 31st. Um, and it's going to go on, on Saturday the 30th. Most of the planet is water. So there's not like too much to worry about but at the same time they have not ruled out that it can't right. land in your fucking backyard right right the chance is not zero no where, where you're gonna be killed by, I, by this chinese i rocket. almost think that isn't there i bet there's a higher chance that this rocket hits you than you hit the uh, powerball last night damn that is that's a great one right whoa that's, yeah i mean i hate to say it but if you yeah. played the lottery last night you know you're probably not a winner unless you li- unless you live in illinois hey if you live in illinois Go check your fucking tickets right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's somewhere. But, uh, yes, yeah. that's the biggest news of the day, yeah. and everybody's freaking out about that it. That would be interesting to see what is the bigger uh, odds. You yeah. winning the lottery or are you getting killed by a Chinese falling rocket booster? Uh, yeah, I, I would have to say that you probably have a better odds of getting hit by this rocket. Just because, <laughs> I don't know. I, th- well, first off, how are they able to do this again, Pat? Why are they able to do this again? How have they not just been fucking shut down? Well, because we've talked about this before. Like They're not signed on to the Artemis Accords. They, uh, you know, they're they're just going it alone, uh, and it's almost um, because the U.S. and its allies have kind of uh, shunned, and for good reason. You know, they're stealing our, our secrets and whatnot. But it's yeah, they've you know we've kind of isolated them, and so they're going it alone, um, and so they yeah they just don't adhere to some of these. Um, different policies and, and rules that uh, uh, other spacefaring nations do. This is where I just can't understand how it's even like. How are there no? Even though they're not part of the, you said it was the Artemis. Um, the Artemis Accords. And so they're not part of that, which means they can't get in trouble for just fucking launching rockets and having their rockets just fall down on. Planet well, there's Earth. also the Outer Space Treaty that was signed, um, but the dates back to the 60s. Um, and I'm not sure if they're signed on to that or not. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't surprise me if they're not. But that's basically like. All nations agree to not basically not do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think even Russia has signed on to the Outer Space Treaty. Uh, Russia has not signed to the Artemis Accords. The Artemis Accords are kind of a, for lack of a better term, an upgrade, uh, an updated um, mm-hmm. so outer, outer space treaty. But it, it covers more of like, hey, when we land on the moon, we're gonna uh, get resources in a uh, uh, sustainable way and a responsible way. You mm-hmm. know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, the the Outer Space Treaty just couldn't have foreseen yeah. uh, some of that stuff. So, um, yeah, I. I they just don't. They they don't subscribe to this stuff. They they don't adhere to it. My orbital take, Pat. It's bullshit and it's embarrassing. I think it's fucking embarrassing for China to be doing this at this day and in this day and age. Yeah. Figure out how to land your own rockets. Like, what are you doing? You can't just fucking. This is not sustainable. Right. This is right. not sustainable by China. Right. Right. And they, you know, at least now they're not um, bringing boosters down onto uh, onto villages uh, in their own in their own country. <laughs> you know, they're killing point. their own countrymen. That's a good point. They're not Roscosmos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so who would you rather get a beer with, the guys over at Roscosmos or the guys over at uh, uh, Chinese National Space Agency (CNSA)? Would you Would you rather have a beer with the guys at CSN or uh, or Roscosmos? I'm going to Roscosmos. Yo, I'm going because you know I'm, they drink. Uh, yes. This yeah. would be fun hanging out with them. Yes, yeah, it'd yeah, be yeah. fun hanging out. Yeah, I want some some 
some uh, you know some caviar yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, some, yeah. and some vodka. That's, I would, that's right up my alley. I would love to get drunk with uh, Dimitri Rogozin and then just like low key just like fight him. Just be like, all right, like let's go. Like yeah, you want to talk all this shit? I will fight you for everybody in America right now. Yeah, I think it'd be super interesting to have a, uh, a, some vodka with. Yeah. Dimitri Rogozin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll have him on Orbital Takes. <laughs> Can you imagine if we got Dimitri Rogozin on Orbital Takes? Oh, my takes? God. Yeah. What would he accuse us of, do you think? Dude, he'd be like, you guys are the reason <laughs> fucking the Soyuz doesn't have enough fucking pull on it. <laughs> <laughs> that clip that you posted is so funny about the Soyuz. I had no idea about that shit. That was so funny. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, other, uh, the other big thing that we wanted to hit today is the sample return mission of Mars, right? So one of, right now, we have one, ro- we have two rovers on Mars. We have so perseverance is kicking mm-hmm. and what's the other one we got up curiosity there? so we got curiosity and perseverance yep. Yep. perseverance the main mission is to grab a rock sample dig deep in mars bring it home that's the mm-hmm. that's the overall goal right yeah so Correct. right now they're at phase one where okay we landed percy in 2020 mm-hmm. then it got going now it's at the jezero crater finally mm-hmm. and we just got news this week and last week is that they are digging and picking up these samples, and now we got to start talking about the fun part, right? Mm-hmm. So the fun part is phase two, you said? Yeah. Yeah, so we had uh, an update from uh, from NASA this week, and, and the European Space Agency, who's partnering with NASA on this huge undertaking, which is bringing samples back from the Martian surface. So yeah. uh, they had, you know, uh, conceptually a, a, a strategy on how to do this, right? And now they've kind of updated that with learnings from Ingenuity, the, the little Mars helicopter. They realize it's working so well. Like, why don't we use this kind of technology? Uh, you know, Ingenuity is just a technology demonstration. Yeah. Uh, so let's, you know, get some, some upgraded hardware um, and let's fly around. Uh, it's going to fly around. It's going to land near one of these things. It's going to drive over to it, pick so it up, sick. and then fly to the next one. Um, and like, yeah, like why not use, you know, take some of these variables out um, and use what has proven to, to work with, with wow. the Ingenuity. Yeah. So Ingenuity is going to have a bunch of wheels on them. Yeah, they're like hella rovers. That's so yeah. sick. And when is this? Do you know when this is happening by? Yeah, so it's supposed to launch in 2028. Oh um, it's supposed to come back in 2033. So we still got a while. We still got quite a while to wait. 28? Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, because I, I think they, yeah, they, they're going to land in 28. And then I think... Um, you know, the, I'm not sure they'll be able to collect all of them within that 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 Mars window there. Um, so yeah, it's uh, the the transfer orbit window. We got to talk about these samples that they're collecting, and uh, I'm gonna post a photo right here for you guys. That this one that I've been looking at, it is so crazy to see like deep down what Mars looks like in one of these samples. Like, cause they dig deep and then they take out, it's almost like digging for fossils on earth. Right. Mm-hmm. We talked about this mm-hmm. a little bit before, like think about on earth, right? Like before we knew about the dinosaurs, start digging, you start finding some fossils and then you're like, Holy shit. There was like a Tyrannosaurus Rex on this fucking planet. Right. Mm-hmm. And then like you, you connect the dots. I feel like the same shit is going to happen on Mars where eventually we're going to continue to dig. Like right now, the samples that we're getting are really small. Like it's this little tiny thing. But in the future, when we get people there and, and our, and our um, technology gets better over there, like it's going to be sick where we're going to be finding. I think, honestly, we're going to find the same fossils that we find here on Earth on Mars. Do you agree with that or not? I do. Uh, I think, you know, we're going to drill down a few meters and discover microscopic life that's currently living, uh, just like we do everywhere here on Earth, uh, because there's no reason to think that it couldn't have con- continued to exist there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's, so that's right now it's uh, Shark Week, and I've had Discovery Channel on the entire fucking week, yeah. and I'm looking at these great white sharks, and I just can't stop looking at. It. Like I'm like, my brain can't comprehend how something like that and us, like uh, humans and great white sharks, yeah. can exist on the same planet, like in the same ecosystem. Yeah. Almost. Can you imagine finding the fossils of a great white fucking shark on Mars? Like, what would that do to everything? That would change at the whole story immediately. Yeah, I, yeah, it, it would. I, I don't think we're going to be finding that. But, uh, <laughs> Megalodon on Mars. Yeah, oh man, Martian I mean, Megalodon. They, that'd be, they that'd be pretty cool. Over there. Dude, think of the Jezero crater's huge. That thing must have been deep as fuck. Yeah, I mean, that's why they landed there. It's because yeah. they think there's going to be a good chance of finding something. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just can't stop thinking about life in, in the deep ocean is most likely what we're going to be finding out there. And um, speaking of missions to other planets, let's talk about that Venus shit that you, you sent mm-hmm. me this week. Yeah, yeah, Rocket Lab. So yeah. what's good with that? Yeah, so if you remember, what, a couple of years ago, uh, they found phosphine in the uh, Venus. It's the, a big deal. What is it? Venu- Venu- Phosphine in the clouds of Venus. Oh, yeah. my God. We yeah. got life on Venus. And then, like, two weeks later, they were like, 
Actually, it's probably just some type of gas. <laughs> yeah, but then for further observation said maybe it maybe it is. Yep. Uh, Venusian atmosphere? Some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Um, so, yeah, uh, Peter Beck, you know, uh, the CEO of Rocket Lab, he loves Venus. That's like his favorite planet. And he's like, well, shit, why don't I just send a private mission there? So That is so yeah, bad. It's going gonna, it's gonna to, like, go, like, th- what, 30 miles into the atmosphere, 30, 30 miles altitude which is ru- uh, roughly the equivalent of the pressure here on Earth. The It's like 60, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. So very livable conditions and see what they find. That is so sick. You yeah. know, we've been to the surface of Venus. Yeah, which is wild. That is bananas. Like, can yeah. you imagine? I mean, I can visualize landing on Mars. You know, we've seen the video, Percy yeah. landing. Like, you know, you can see it now. But Venus. Yeah. The fucking the hottest planet from the sun. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, and we're gonna have two more NASA missions, uh, or one mat- one NASA mission. Yeah, they dropped one- it earlier this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. the pro- I really like the private rocket lab mission because that's gonna- they're gonna be. U- which rocket are they gonna be using? They're gonna be using theirs. Their their neutron. Yeah, their neutron. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. but they don't have a capsule for that yet, do they? No, the uh, uh, the fairing kind of un- unfurls like a uh, like a. Like a little clam kind of thing. Okay. Um, so uh, it's not for humans. This mission? No, it's not for humans. Oh fuck, Pat! I, I thought the first private mission oh, was gonna. Oh no, no 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 no! It's no. it probably would take too long to get back and shit. It's and a, yeah. This is just this is just a science mission. Yeah, but yeah. that's like we love Rocket Lab. Like, can I get is it fair yeah. to say that yeah. we fucking love Rocket Lab? Yes. The the CEO to the the design the aspect the missions like that's ballsy to like announce the first yeah. private mission to fucking Venus like yeah. what yeah. first off guys you could see Venus pretty much any night during the summer go up and look at uh, your night sky it's so bright Venus yeah. is so beautiful in the night sky if you had to choose one of your favorite planets to look at without a telescope what do you think it is uh, probably Mars. You think so? Yeah, it's a su- such a distinct color. Yeah. Uh, although we were talking earlier, uh, it's uh, leaves something to be desired when you're looking through a backyard telescope and it's just an orange blob. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, it's easily spotted without anything. Yeah. When you get like any type of telescope and you even try to look at anything in it, just like the the advertisement says, you'll have a lot more respect for astronomers and uh, astrophotographers. Yeah. Because you realize how tough it actually is. So yeah. like even the fact that some of these amateur astronomers are able to get just any type of photo of a galaxy is truly mind blowing because yeah. it is so hard to see. You know, Andro- you can actually see Andronoma with the naked eye mm-hmm. on some Yeah, if, if the, the closest galaxy to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, as long as you're uh, in a dark enough spot. Yeah. yeah, it's like a big smudge up there. What do you, where do you think the human uh, civilization will be when Andronoma eventually uh, mixes with? <laughs> yeah, well, they said that's in galaxy. like two billion years. Well, wh- wh- where do you think it would be? Do you think that we have a chance to get off this planet and to you know? To uh, go throughout the stars, or do you think that by then we'll be so long gone it won't even matter? I think by then we're going to be so long gone it's not even going to matter. Man, why you got to say that? Bro? Yeah. Uh, so we got the SLS launch next month, Space Launch System. Then we got uh, Starship going orbital next month. Mm-hmm. What uh, are, there, are there any updates this week? I feel like not much has changed. Yeah, not a whole lot's changed. I know the they were making uh, final preparations on the Orion capsule for for the SLS. They, and they better. <laughs> they uh, they have all the secondary payloads. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of like you know um, uh, little CubeSats and stuff like that. Those yeah. are all loaded. Final preps are being made in the VAB, and then, and then it's when out. they roll it out, uh, you know, uh, mid August, then we're we're going. But I just I, I don't think anything has been uh, announced recently about Starship. They I know they've done a couple uh, tanking tests and things like that. Yeah. But I just hope that they tell us sooner rather than later, bro. We got to get tickets. We got to get hotels. Yeah. We got to get down there. So this is going to be really interesting when this date comes out. It's gonna be all over the news, and we're buy- I'm buying yeah. a ticket immediately. Like I'm, we're going. I'm yeah. fucking going. Yeah. I'm hyped for that. Uh, so, what would you rather see if you had the opportunity? So, let's say Space Launch System, and let's say the SLS and the Starship launch on the same day. Which would you prefer to be at? That is such a tough one. That's oh, a tough man. one, right? Because whatever oh, you answer, like it's a wrong answer no matter what. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. <sighs> what do you think? I'll tell you mine first if you want to hear mine. Yeah. What's yours? My first. So my first option would be Starship. Yeah. Because I want to go down to Starbase, Texas. I want to be in that atmosphere. I want to get a photo in front of the Starships behind me. Mm-hmm. So if I go now, would those like are there start enough Starships there that like you can get photos in front of? Like oh, yeah. what, so which model is going to orbit? I think they said 24, ship 24. Okay, so that, that's one with the black shit all over and the black mm-hmm. key tiles. Right. Okay, and then they have... Because, like, every time I see an influencer or somebody in the space industry go down to um, Starbase, Texas, they always take these dope photos with, like, Starship in the back. Like, multiple of them. Yeah, they have the... Uh, something called the... I think it's the Rocket Garden or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that looks sick. Yeah, where they just, like, park all the, all the old ones. That's where I want to go because... 
I like look. So we have a. This is totally off topic, but there's a photo of King Tut on my wall. Okay, mm-hmm. and he lived about two thousand to three thousand years ago, maybe even more. It's crazy to me that we're living during a time that I could be standing next to the vehicle that's going to bring us to another fucking planet yeah. before anybody else. Your kids, my kids, and the next generation, next generation, they can't do this. Right. We can. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes me really excited yeah. about it, and that's why I would want to go to Starship because Artemis. I mean. Yeah, that rocket would be sick to watch it go off, but we've been to the moon before, and although we're going back and it's really exciting, Starship wins for me. What about you? I'm going to say, God, uh, that's such a tough one. Are we disagreeing here or what? There, there is a, uh, a wrong answer no matter what you pick. Yeah, no, no, uh, I'm no. Gonna we're going to piss people off. I'm going to say SLS, and, and here's why. Um, it is America's moon rocket. Um, it is, you know, NASA's moon rocket. Uh which is, you know, something to be said about national pride there. But, uh, you know, it's only going to launch once every two years, maybe. Mm-hmm. So the shots on goal aspect, you know, you'll be able to see a ton of Starship launches yeah. if it really launches with the cadence, which he says it will, mm-hmm. uh, which Elon says it will, which is up to three times a day. Yeah. Uh, so you'll Breakfast, be able to lunch, s- dinner. Yeah, you'll be able to see plenty of those. And you may only get to see SLS one, uh, once every two years or so. Mm-hmm. so That's um, a fucking great point. Yeah. I but, uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I, I would go to either one for sure. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Wait, but uh, so SLS will be way more uh, politically correct, right? Like SLS will be more of like, uh, how can you compare SLS to, to spa- like a SpaceX? Because they don't, guys, SpaceX doesn't give a shit. They're cool. Like it's Elon and the boys, you know what I mean? Like NASA's a little more like, all right, you know, are you like, don't wear provocative clothing to our launch. Right. You know what I mean? Like SpaceX, SpaceX is more like, let's fucking launch this motherfucker. You know what I mean? I mean, that's the difference between, you know, government versus private. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, it will be interesting to see which one goes first. I think my official take is that Starship will go first because I think once they're once they're ready, they're just going to shoot it because they don't give a shit. Uh, I think the SLS they're going to take a little more time to really make sure everything's ready and they don't fuck it up. Yeah, if they it, fuck this up, we're screwed. Oh uh, well, yeah. Both uh, of them could really fail. Both mm-hmm. of them. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. Uh, you know, if they miss this first launch window for SLS, I think they have to wait two months um, because of the time it takes to detank to retank, to roll it back, like to do all that stuff. Yeah. So uh, it, it'd be so interesting uh, if if it chooses or if they choose not to launch in this first launch window and then Starship ends up launching first Yeah. Uh, because of that. Wouldn't it be really fucking devastating if they both like fuck up and blow oh up? Oh my God, don't even talk about that. That would be so bad because like a lot of it is like, what's the general public going to think about this too, right? And like, yeah. are we going to get more space fans out of this? So like, yeah. what should we desperately need? Yeah. So wait, I did want to uh, just quickly touch on our logo. So oh, yes, uh, we yes. we wanted to tell you guys a little bit our, about our logo because we're really passionate. I'm really passionate about it. I know yeah. you are too. Yeah. Like we went through a lot of different edits. Shout out uh, our guy Michael Z. And um, you know I can't recommend this guy enough. If you ever need a logo, we decided that we wanted to do this podcast about three months ago, and we talked about it. We talked about it, and we were like, all right, why don't we make this like our own fucking thing? We're both Jayhawks. We both love Kansas. So the red and blue really much came natural to us like we we uh, asked for that but then let's talk about it so what is your favorite part about the logo i like the two stars uh so we both went to like you said both went to the university of kansas and the uh the state motto of kansas is ad astra per aspera uh so you know the to the stars uh so we have two yeah. stars there representing you and me yeah and so that's in the a's so the, the the two a's in it he put stars there um with the the O that you see is the planet orbiting. We requested, like, we really wanted to have, like, something orbiting our logo. And you guys are actually going to see this animated in the future, which is going to be really cool, right? Like, that, uh, the O is going to be, like, moving around the, the logo, which is dope. And yeah. then, yeah, we, we went with, like, a space font, the red and blue. And then the background, you guys might know this. Pat, tell them about the background of the image. The background, that's the Starship heat tile. So I'm saying yeah. a, lot, a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. That shit's sick. So yeah. this is the, that is the spaceship that's going to take us to Mars right there. And it's going to park us on the moon. I'm super proud of that, of that logo. It, it took us uh, a few weeks to, to dial it in, and I'm, yeah. I'm super happy with, the, with, it, with it. It really does look sexy. And then we also put some uh, our own filters on it, right? So, like, we got it, and then we put our own, like, Instagram filters on it, and that's why you see, like, it's so blue and everything. I don't know. I fuck with the blue. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there you go. So that's our logo. We wanted to fill you guys in there. And, uh, yeah, let us know. Look, we want to try to explore other avenues of different segments and different fun shit that we could do on here because, you know, even though this is a space podcast, we want to have fun with you guys, right? And we want to... We want to really, uh, <laughs> we want to really uh, connect with our audience. So uh, once again, thank you guys so much. Go follow us on Instagram, Twitter, all that. Pat, you got anything? 
Uh, make sure to give us a like, um, uh, drop us a review, you know, five stars would be great on whatever podcast you listen to and at Astro. At Astro, baby. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Peace.